Paul is uh, coming at you. Michael Pickering here talking about our famous question. What's going on in the world today? And today we're continuing our discussion on gender equality that we started last week. You know, last week we did the 10 most gender equal countries in the world as calculated by the United Nations Gender Inequality Index 2021. And all of you should check out this data set and the United Nations website in general. You know, it's it's pretty interactive and it has a really nice graph on it. You can look at gender inequality by country and you can look at it, you know, the whole world together. But over time, it's a really cool and informative way. People check it out. Check it out. But last week we did the top 10 most gender equal countries. This week we do the 10 least gender equal countries in the world. We'll dive into how these numbers are calculated again after the list, but for now, remember, countries are scored from 0.0 to 1.0, with 0.0 being most equal and 1.0 being most unequal in gender equity. All these data are from 2021, because 2022 data isn't available yet via the United Nations. But now, to the list. Coming in at number 10, Mauritania with a 0.632. Number nine, Sierra Leone, a 0.633. Number eight, Haiti, a 0.635. Number seven, Liberia, 0.648. Number six, Chad, 0.652. Number five, Central African Republic, 0.672. Number four, Afghanistan, 0.678. Number three, Nigeria, 0.680. Number two, Papua New Guinea, 0.725. And number one, Yemen, 0.820. And there you have it. But now it's time. Let's dig a little deeper into the data and let's talk about how these numbers are created and what countries are and are not in the data set. You know, let's start with the construction of the index. You know, if you remember last week, we explained that the index is a compound variable looking at three overarching categories, reproductive health, empowerment, and the labor market. Now, let's break that down further into the five actual variables used to tabulate the gender indices, plural, because we use this for women and men, which is important, and you'll see why in just a second. But the five variables are Number one, maternal mortality ratio, deaths per 100,000 live births. Number two, adolescent birth rates, births per 1,000 women ages 15 to 19. Number three, shares of seats in parliament, percent held by women. Number four, population with at least some secondary education, percent ages 25 and older. Number five, Labor force participation rates, percent ages 15 and older. Now, all five of those together, for any one country, gives you the female gender index. And furthermore, if you focus on just empowerment and labor market and leave out reproductive health, that's how the United Nations calculates the male gender index. And once the United Nations calculates the female gender index and the male gender index for any given country, then you create the gender inequality index by comparing those two scores. And that is how the United Nations makes the gender inequality index. Now you know. And is it a perfect measure? No, no measure is perfect at all. So of course, this one is flawed as well. But this is by far one of the most comprehensive gender inequality indices that we have for the entire world. And even considering all its shortcomings, it's one of the best. Now, to those shortcomings, when you look at the data sheet on Excel or whatever you use to view it, one of those shortcomings jump right at you. You For instance, Yemen, the least gender equal country in the index is ranked to number 170. There's almost 200 countries in the world. So where are the other 30 countries? That's a significant amount of countries missing and could very well change the placement of Yemen as being last on this list. But I can tell you why they're not in the data set. And it's simple, really. 
not all countries have the statistics calculated that are required to calculate the gender inequality index. I mean, think about it. Think what you need in order to calculate this index. You need the maternal mortality ratio, deaths per 100,000 lives births. If you don't have that statistic for your country, then you can't calculate any of it. You also need adolescent birth rates, births per 1,000 women ages 15 to 19, shares of seats in parliament, percent held by women. This one's probably the easiest statistic to get, but the others, population with at least some secondary education, percent ages 25 and older, labor force participation rates, percent ages 15 and older. These are pretty specific statistics. And it could very well be that the 30 countries that are missing don't have some of them. Now, it could also be that some of them, these countries, don't want it publicly known how high gender inequality is in the country. It's hard to say. But do yourself a favor, people. Check out the United Nations data on gender inequality in the world. And look at your country and compare it to other countries you're interested in. And look at global gender equality. And ask yourself, what can we do better? And how do we do better?